Alrighty guys, so here's a question that's been a hot topic of discussion over the past three to five years among fitness enthusiasts. And that is, does increasing your muscle size increase your strength potential? So for example, if your biceps get bigger, do you automatically curl more weight? Or is it more about how you train and the program logistics and not just how much your arms really grow? So this is definitely a loaded question. So let's see if we can gain some insight in today's educational video. Well, a 2021 study looked to examine the relationship between changes in muscle size and changes in muscle strength. Specifically, the authors appeared to be expanding upon prior research that failed to show that increases in muscle size had a large or meaningful impact on muscle strength in the short term. The authors wanted to determine if an exercise condition that experienced hypertrophy over an eight week time period could achieve greater strength in a subsequent four week strength mesocycle when compared to a condition that did not experience hypertrophy over the same time period. So in short, the authors had two research questions. Number one, does traditional hypertrophy training, which is higher rep ranges with moderate weights, lead to more strength gains than just lifting heavy singles? And number two, if you do experience muscle hypertrophy, does that give you an edge in strength later on? Essentially, what they're asking is, does increased muscle size increase our strength potential? So what did they do? Let's take a look at the methods. So to answer their question, the authors had 25 resistance train lifters perform bicep curls in both arms, but their arms were randomized into two different exercise conditions. One arm did four sets of eight to 12 rep bicep curls taken to task failure, and the other arm simply worked up to heavy singles. Basically, they were practicing their one rep max each training session. The mesocycle lasted for eight to 12 weeks with participants training two times per week. Following this eight week time period, the authors then had participants perform a four week strength mesocycle. During this time, both arms trained the same way with a one rep max focus, meaning both arms worked up to single one rep maxes during each training visit. This was done to test if muscle growth from phase one gave the bigger, more muscular arm a strength advantage. During the second mesocycle, the participants trained each arm twice per week. Now, during the strength phase, both arms performed a one rep max during each training session with up to five one rep max attempts. And that was followed by two sets of as many repetitions as possible that could be lifted for eight to 12 reps. The additional two sets of exercise were simply provided as hypertrophy maintenance during that four week extension. The authors did not want the small amount of muscle acquired during the first phase to be lost during the four week strength mesocycle. Maximal one rep max bicep strength and biceps muscle thickness measurements using B-mode ultrasound were taken prior to training, so at baseline, then following the initial eight weeks of training, which was the hypertrophy or the strength mesocycle, depending on which group, and again after the four week strength mesocycle. The authors took multiple images of the biceps with images taken at 50, 60, and 70% the distance of the upper arm. So let's take a look at the results. The main findings of this study were as follows. Number one, the traditional resistance training group, and recall these participants were performing four sets of eight to 12 repetitions, produced greater changes in muscle size when compared to the bi-weekly one rep max training during the first mesocycle. Strength changes were similar between conditions following the initial eight week training period, despite one condition observing muscle growth and the other condition observing no meaningful growth. Number three, although muscle growth was greatest in the condition performing the traditional resistance training during that initial eight weeks, there was no evidence that this greater growth led to greater changes in strength in the subsequent four week strength block. Now, in terms of changes in muscle size, the changes were fairly moderate with the largest increase observed in the traditional training condition at the 70% muscle site following the eight week training intervention. And the mean change in muscle thickness was 0.21 centimeters. So what does this mean for you and I? Well, first off, strength isn't just about muscle size. Adaptations over a 12 week time frame in the present study were actually very similar between both conditions. Now, I find this quite interesting, especially when you consider that most textbooks suggest that the primary reason resistance trained individuals experience increases in muscle strength are because of increases in muscle size. So with that said, this model clearly needs some revisiting or at least in certain circumstances. This may suggest that even 
even trained individuals who've been resistance training for a number of years can still experience neural or other local muscular adaptations that may contribute to improved strength. This may be in part why just practicing lifting heavy can make you stronger, even when our muscles don't grow. Second, in trained lifters, muscle growth didn't appear to provide any advantage when it came to strength gains, at least not in the short term. And there was no evidence in this study that having larger muscles resulted in increased strength potential. And sure, it's certainly plausible that maybe over six months or a year, increases in muscle size play a bigger role in strength adaptations. But in this 12 week window, the bigger muscles didn't outperform the smaller ones when it came to strength. So here's my main takeaway. If you wanna get really freaking strong, you have to train specifically for strength. This means training with heavy loads, low reps, and practicing the actual lift. Additionally, size may help, but it's not the only or even the biggest factor here. In fact, scientists still don't seem to agree on the degree of how impactful increases in muscle size actually are on strength adaptations. However, it does seem that the small amount of muscle growth that you can acquire over an eight week time period is probably too small to have a meaningful impact in your ability to improve strength. So now I wanna hear from you all. Have you personally noticed gains in strength without seeing changes in size? Or maybe you found it to be the other way around. So please feel free to share your experience in the comment section of this video and be sure to give this video a like if you found it interesting and please make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next educational video.